You're listening to the Fit Mind, Fit Body podcast, where we explore the connection between a fit body and positive mental health. And our big mission, it's to help 10,000 runners to develop fitter minds in the next two years. I'm your host, Michelle Frost. Let's get moving. Welcome to this episode of the Fit Mind Fit Body Podcast. Today we speak to Jace Milner and he shares just what it's like to run every day. So far, his running streak, he has run for six years, so over 2,000 days in a row. This is a great talk. Enjoy. Today on Fit Mind Fit Body, I am really fortunate to get to speak to Jace Milner a young man who's I've known in the running world for quite a few years now. Um, welcome, Jace. Hi, thanks for having me. It is an absolute pleasure. And I'm really looking forward to getting to know you a bit more. I feel like I'm... I know because, you know, Tasmania is this big. I feel like I know little bits about you. And I, I even know a friend of ours, um, Murfitt's, um, Oh, you're friends with the Murphys. Yeah, well, one of my kids was best friends with Katie in high school. Ah, it was right about on. the same time I first met you. So it was like, oh, <laughs> there's all these yeah. connections. It's just like Yeah, I, I like worked that. for them for a long time. I know. Yeah. <laughs> See, <laughs> this is Tasmania. <laughs> anyway, why don't we start back with, rather than uh, your work history, where did you grow up, Jace? Uh, here in Launceston. Excellent. Where about? Yep. Um, um, suburbs Northern too. suburbs, Allenbar. Oh, yeah. So you um, went to school up that way? Yeah, so I went to primary school at Rochelle Primary, yep. which no longer exists. Unfortunately, okay. they pulled it down and amalgamated it with um, some other schools. I taught um, there briefly, believe it or not. Really? <laughs> when I first came out of uni. Yeah, yeah right. Okay. Um, and then moved on to Brooks High School, which yep. um, at the time was at uh, the old campus, which is now the UTAS campus. Yeah. So I had two years down there um, whilst they were building the new campus, which is up at Rochelle. Mm -hmm. And then we moved up to there. Oh, wow. So what was your schooling like in regards to sport? What did you do? Um, what did you in, enjoy? In primary school, um, I played school cricket and school football, mm -hmm. you know, like most people do. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you know, school athletics carnivals. Mm -hmm. uh, but outside of that, uh, my sister and I did little athletics um, yeah. for for many years. Okay. And then late mm, late primary school, I took up tennis, um, and so played that for yeah, I don't know, probably five years, maybe. Yeah, I don't know, four or okay. five years, something yeah. like that. Um, yeah, and then sort of high school probably grade eight turned into a typical teenager and didn't do any sport at all can you remember like I don't know primary school I probably feels like a little while ago uh, do you remember did you enjoy the sport was it is it something that you you yeah, wanted yeah. to do or did they you know because sometimes parents in school make you do mm. stuff but you actually no, enjoy it no loved it loved cricket yeah. loved football was never very good at it but loved being involved and doing it mm. um little athletics was the same it was kind of just middle of the road i guess yeah um but yeah still enjoyed it and went you know every week yeah. because i wanted to yeah that's awesome yeah um, but then you what so upper high school it was like oh this is not um, cool anymore i've got other no, pre going pretty on. much pick, picked up a guitar and that's what i wanted to do oh wow that's mm. excellent so how did what, how far did you go with your guitar? What did you? Um, oh, you know, it it was the, you know, it was what I wanted to do. Um, mm -hmm. So when I went to college, went to Allenvale College, it was primarily to do music. Do music. Um, but then I decided I was pretty shit at it, so I gave it up. Do you still play? No. Jace. No, I have. Like to, or do you do you have like uh, a? I would love to. I've mm. got six guitars and a few amps and I, I don't pick any of them up because, uh, yeah, I just don't. Oh, well, maybe one day it'll spin around oh, and you'll yeah. go back to it. It's one of those um, things I think gets under your skin. <laughs> Looking yeah, at some of my exactly friends right. and my kids. 
yeah, yeah. like mu- music's um, very big for me. And, um, yeah, I, I would love to, but I don't think that I ever will. But, yeah. you know, I, st- I still like to keep my guitars. Yeah. It's a good mm. party trick too. It is. Like, it's a party, get the guitar out and mm. strum a song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What, so tell me, you went to Allenvale College, you were just saying, yep. and you, you did mostly music for a little while there until you decided maybe that wasn't the path for you. What happened after yep. that? Um, so whilst I was at college, um, picked up some casual work as a roadie uh, yeah. here in Launceston. Yeah. So any touring bands or, you know, acts or artists that would come to Launceston, I would usually get hired as part of a crew to unload the trucks and yeah. set up the stage and then pull it all yeah. down afterwards. So got to work for, I don't know, locals like Farnham and Barnsey and Diesel and um, and and acts like that. Um, oh, cool. But then also internationals. Um, so, yeah, along the way I worked for at the Brian Adams, Tina Turner, Oh, yeah. uh, the cranberries, the cores, you know, all that sort of thing. Wow. So music um, was quite a big thing really for you. Oh, even yeah. Though you weren't yeah. necessarily the one playing the guitar. No, that's right. And I, you know, really enjoyed that side of it. That was cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was, it was hard work and it was long hours, but it was good fun. Um, and you usually got to see the show as well. Um, so, yeah, that, that was just casual work for, I don't know, maybe four years or something like that. Um, and usually it was just, yeah, unloading, setting up, yeah. watching the gig and then packing up, you know, at all hours of the morning. Um, and then the, the la- I think the last one that I did for that company, I actually got to drive um, a Tarago and picked up Van Halen from the airport <laughs> when they were here in, oh, I, did, I don't even know what year that was, late 90s. That's amazing. Mm. So I had um, Eddie and Alex Van Halen and their wives and one of their kids um, in the back of this Tarago picked up from the airport and took them to the hotel and whatnot. Wow. What would have mm. been your, one of your favourite moments from that period? Uh, probably that. <laughs> yeah? So yeah. You, you're a big fan of... Um, um, yeah, at, at, yeah, like at the time, you know, Eddie's a guitar god. Um, so yeah, pretty big fan, and yeah, that was cool. <laughs> it quite a nerve wracking too, was it? Um, no, surprisingly not. No, no, no they 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 were very casual, and yeah. Uh, yeah, and I was pretty casual, so yeah, <laughs> that's really cool. Yeah, it was right. good. So during that time, I mean, I don't know from a distance, um, you think people in that world um, deliberately going out of your way to exercise is not doesn't seem to fit into that lifestyle because it seems to be, you know, such late nights and things like that mm. and maybe waking up with a headache. But that's, again, it's only from the outside people's perception what it's really like when you're, when you're there, I don't know. But um, I assume you didn't do lots of or anything outside of your work, which sounds pretty physical anyway. But no, so um, sort of mid, mid-high mid school, I stopped playing tennis, mm-hmm. um, still did. Yeah, st- still ran in the cross countries at high school, um, which, you know, was fine. I didn't mind doing um, because I'd done athletics, you know. I didn't hate running. Yeah. Um, but never, it was never a regular thing. It was our oh, cross countries coming up, you know, you, yeah. you just, you compete. Um, and, yeah, as far as sport or exercise goes, yeah, it was literally non-existent um, mm. for Geez, for a very long time. Wow. So yeah. you've, you're, you finished this, uh, the roadie job with the company here. Yep. What, so that what? was just casual. Um, I picked up a job at ACL Bearing Company um, when they were, you know, a very big, um, what do you say, active company, I guess, here in Tassie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I worked up there for a couple of years as yeah. a, just a machine operator, process yeah. sort of operator. Um, and then I, I kind of got sick of that, and so I went back to TAFE um, and did a pre-vocational auto-electrical mm-hmm. course, mm-hmm. and from that got uh, my apprenticeship, yeah. which, oh, geez, I didn't, 
don't, I actually don't know what year that was now. A little while know. ago. Yeah, it was a little while ago. <laughs> um, and so then that started, yeah, sort of that, that career path. Uh, but still, at that point, I, I did nothing, um, nothing physical other than yeah. work. Yeah. yeah. So you went into, I guess, a trade of, of being an auto electrician. At that period, and what got you into? And right now, my understanding: Are you still an auto electrician right now? Yep. But yep. That's, that's what you do. So correct. So we've taken care of your work life. <laughs> so <laughs> how did you get into running? Because I know it's a big part of your life now. When did that happen? Uh, so probably. Well, if I go back a, a couple of steps, um, so my eldest just turned eighteen last week oh. and before he was born for a very long time um i've always suffered with a sore back like lower yeah. back pain mm -hmm. before he was born i went to a chiro to just get try and get it sorted because mm -hmm. uh, i wanted to be a bit you know I, I didn't want to be suffering with a sore back with a small child yeah um so that then led me down a whole path of a diagnosis as to why I've got a sore back mm -hmm. and what we were going to do about it. So along the way, um, after visiting some specialists, um, you know, the, the pain would come and go. It got to a point where it was really, really bad at one point and I ended up at an orthopaedic surgeon and then a neurosurgeon and a chiro and a physio sort of all around the same time. Mm -hmm. And they had all said to me, um, <laughs> the end result was that I needed to work on my core strength to yeah. take a bit of pressure off my back. Mm -hmm. um, and they pretty much all said, take up swimming. It's great yeah. for you. Don't take up running. That'll be bad for you. <laughs> um, and so that was, yeah, that was cool. I can't swim, so I was never going to take up swimming. I had thought about taking up running again just um, mm -hmm. as a means to get myself a bit fitter. I guess I realised that I was probably work fit, but I wasn't that physically fit. Life fit. Yeah. I was never overweight or anything like that. I never had any health issues, mm -hmm. but I just thought maybe I should be doing something somewhere along the line. And then after all these experiences with the specialists and everything they said, one day I just thought, Margaret, I'll go for a run and see what happens. And that was uh, 11 years ago, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. More than 10, maybe 11, maybe going on 12 years ago. Yeah. I just, I went for a run just around the block. Mm -hmm. um, and it's kind of snowballed from there. <laughs> Can you remember why you went for the second run? No. Because like, often I the first one is like, <laughs> Yep. And it was. And I, and I still remember the first run. Yeah. I don't remember the second one. Isn't that interesting? Mm. So you went from running around the block, however far that is, to now pretty much running most days. What are you running at the moment? As a... uh, so at the moment, I run every day. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have done for the last 2,229 days, I think it might be. I was going to say, what is your streak? <laughs> I knew that it was pretty long. <laughs> yeah, so uh, at the end of last year, it was six years. Wow. So six years plus this year. So what's the shortest distance you'll do in your everyday running? Uh, for me, 2Ks. Mm. So before we got on, we were talking about that thing that I've only just discovered, and that is having multiple <laughs> pairs of shoes on the go at once. It's particularly important, I would think, for someone who was lacing up every day, every single day. Yeah, I, I think it's pretty important to have, you know, several pairs of shoes, and especially if you're doing a lot of kilometres, say, on one particular day, and you're going to run the next day like, like I would, mm. um, to be able to give that pair of shoes a rest yeah. and let them recover so I'll pull on a different pair of shoes yeah that's really mm. interesting well I guess one of the questions that needs to be asked is why 
Why are you running every single day for 6,000? What was it? How many days? Uh, currently 2,200. 2, six, six years or so. Yeah. So what, why? Why? <laughs> what um, made it, you decide to do that? So towards the end of 2015, I'd read an article about uh, an Englishman called Ron Hill. Mm -hmm. yep. He was, I don't know, late 60s, early 70s at the time. And he was still in the middle of a run streak that had lasted, you know, I can't think of it. It, it was like 52 years or something. Oh, wow. So he had not missed a day in 50 something years. That's crazy. His minimum distance was a mile mm -hmm. and he had run through all sorts of issues, yep. operations, illnesses. His life. Yep. And so I would, I'd read this article and I thought, oh, I wonder if I could do that for a year, just a year. And I thought, well, rather than a mile, I'll set it at two kilometres mm -hmm. because we're metric. Um, and, you know, I just thought I'll give it a go and see what happens. I had no idea whether or not I could do it. Um, and so I just kicked off on the 1st of January on 20, yeah, 2016. Um, yeah. And I got to the end of the first year. I thought, oh, that was cool. You know, I did it, I, which was, I, was, I was pretty proud of that. Yeah. And then the 1st of January the next year of, of 2017, I thought, well, what do I do? Like, bugger it. I'll just, I'll go for a run and I'll just keep going and I'll see what happens, you know, during this year. And, yeah, it's just been one of those things. I just keep on going. It just keeps snowballing. So how do you, how do you, um, or how do you fit it into your life for a start? Like how do you, is it, do you run the same time every day? How does that work, that part? Um, not the same time every day. The routine during the weeks is similar, I guess. Yeah. But I, I don't know, I guess I just fit it in around life. Yeah. Um, because my minimum is two Ks, at worst, that's, I don't know, 12 minutes. Yeah. Um, so I figured I should be able to find at least 12 minutes out of 24 hours mm -hmm. every single day yeah. just to go for a quick run. Have you had many times where you go to get into bed? Well, I guess towards the end of yeah. the day, for whatever kind of day it's been, one of those days where yes. everybody else dictated what you did for some reason um yep. even unexpectedly and you went oh i've got to go out it's like <laughs> where's my head torch you know is that kind yep. of happened yeah it has um not so much um in the last uh, couple of years i guess but mm -hmm. certainly earlier on in the run streak there were times where yeah i i you know i'd be at home or the kids would be in bed and i think oh you know, it's nearly bedtime, shit, got to go for a run. <laughs> and, you know, usually that was winter, raining, yeah. cold, yeah, that type of thing. On the not nice state. Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it certainly happened a few times where, yeah, quite easily I might have forgotten. Yeah. So mm. what do you think this long streak, um, and that I'm assuming you're not planning to stop any time soon, no, no. The plan is to keep going as long as I'm physically able to, to do it. I've, I've kind of decided if I physically couldn't do it, if my leg was broken and I couldn't run, mm -hmm. that's fine. I'll let it go. Mm -hmm. But if I didn't do it because I just couldn't be bothered that day or I thought, oh, bugger it, I'll let it go, the next day I'd be pretty disappointed. Mm. At, at having broken it. Yeah. So what do you think the most important thing that this streak is giving you as a person? Um, maybe resilience. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, every, it's not every day that you feel physically fit or fresh or whatever. Um, so, yeah, maybe the, the resilience just to keep something going mm. no matter what. Because it is habits that form what our life becomes. And a lot yeah. of people, well, we all develop um, unhealthy habits. 
So, and it, we find it hard sometimes to develop some of the healthier habits, whereas yes. you know, you've just got this very long streak of a, of a healthy habit yeah. um, in place, it appears. It's, it's yeah, really and, and that's pretty much what it is. It's a habit. It, what, it has become a habit. Yeah. Um, you know, no matter what I've got on for a day, no matter where I am at some point, I know that I need to find 12 minutes mm -hmm. to pull on a pair of shoes and go for a run. Yeah. And I guess it, um, especially in winter, you kind of plan it a little bit more, you know, might look at the weather or yeah. just have a think about what I've got on for the day, where I can squeeze it in or whether I need to just be prepared that it's going to be later tonight in the rain or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because it is a habit, you tend to, um, you tend to have it on your mind a bit just to try and plan for it. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's it. Well, okay. So going back before your streak, so you started running, went around the block. How did you, did, what were the next steps to get into? Because I know you've done plenty of races of all kinds. What were those next? You know, how did you move into what is the running world? Like to me, when I think of you, I know you have other worlds, other hobbies as well, but I know that the running has certainly become a major part of your social life as well. How did that yeah. kind of happen? Um, I think I sort of just, you know, I was just doing my thing just by myself. I didn't know anyone else that ran. Mm -hmm. And I was in town one day and I come across the running company. Yeah. Um, they hadn't been open long and there was a sign out the front about run club was starting up mm -hmm. and I can't remember if I went in and bought a pair of shoes and got chatting to Mike or whether I went to run club and then bought a pair of shoes after that. I can't remember. But anyway, I fronted up for, for run club and I think it might've been his very first run club that I fronted up for. Awesome. But I remember being very, um, very nervous about it because I, I guess I didn't see myself as, a runner yeah you know i was just a guy that went for a run mm -hmm. and this was an organized run club so i wasn't convinced that this was going to be my thing how long, i, I how wasn't long convinced that i was going club? to fit in uh i don't know right not long yeah. probably right. ma maybe a few months okay. yeah not mm -hmm. not a great deal of time i don't think um but yeah i fronted up there and um you know, it was just a group of, I don't know, everyday people like myself that mm -hmm. ran. And that's what we did. We went for a run. Um, and, yeah, that's, I guess, and from there you grow friendships mm -hmm. and suddenly I knew runners where previously it was just me and I just ran by myself. Um, and so then eventually you organise to run with some of these people outside of the organised run club on a Wednesday. And so then that morphs into uh, eventually probably the, you know, somewhere along the line, I guess you probably ran at run club as well. I have. And then, and then I remember you and I ran several times together on a Sunday. Yep. Um, and then, <laughs> yep, that's right. And, and so then suddenly the stupid clock group is formed. Yep. Um, so, yeah, it, it quickly evolves. It's, once you get to know a few people, it quickly evolves into, um, yeah, it, it just gets bigger and bigger. Mm. So it's, I guess, the opportunities, If when, once you start down this track, maybe that's the same with many hobbies that people take on. Um, it can be as all-encompassing as you want. Like there are opportunities yep. all over the place yep. if you're ready for them, yep. which is really cool. Uh, one question that popped into my mind was, um, is your, do you have any trouble with your back still? <laughs> because you were um, talking about that yeah. earlier and I thought. Oh. Um, so back when my back was really, really bad, like mm. it was as bad as not being able to lift my leg up to put my sock on. Oh, and that's what got me to specialists and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so from that point to say today, I don't reckon my back has been, my back hasn't felt better than what it currently feels, I reckon, in 25 years. Wow. Um, 
I do nothing specific for it. I don't actually do any core strength work. I don't stretch. I don't roll. I don't do anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, I still do the same physical work that I've always done. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I just run and yeah, it, it aches every now and again, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, you know, it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be or as it as as bad as it's ever has been mm. so the running mm. itself is is probably helping with your core strength anyway oh, so without I find that if I don't run for you know say two weeks because it's whatever reason um the first thing I feel is my back my lower back yep. so I yep. think definitely and then I start running and within a week or so I don't feel it again <laughs> yep. at all so yeah that's right yep. that we do get and some I'm core strength even if it's not you know directly yeah, exactly. And I think because I've obviously been running consistently, as in every day, um, I've, I've built up a, a certain amount of core strength at least. Okay. Um, and, yeah, like I said, it, it really hasn't felt this good. And, and it's been like this for, for a few years now. Mm. Um, it hasn't felt this good for years and years. Mm. That's awesome. Mm. Um, of course, we should say this is not medical advice. And if you have a back problem, you should have a <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> don't listen to me. Don't I don't actually it. know. <laughs> your particular situation is your particular situation. Correct. Um, so um, when it comes to races, because I know that you've, you know, uh, for a while there when I was going to quite a few races, um, Jace would just pop up. <laughs> just thinking, like, like all these races, a bit like where's Wally? Jace would almost be guaranteed to be at any yeah. kind of race, whether it's a trail race or a road race, he'd just be there. Yep. So how did you I get into there. racing? What made you decide that that was the next um, thing? So I hadn't been running very long um, and I still, um, I, I couldn't fathom these people that ran 10 kilometres. Like they were just, why would you do such a thing? Because, you know, running three or four or five nearly killed me most of yeah. the time. Um, and then one day I thought, oh, I saw the Launceston 10 actually being advertised. And I can't think what year this is. I should have looked back so I knew for sure. But um, it was when it was before Bunnings was in yep. uh, Lindsay Street. Mm -hmm. And that was the, the sports grounds. Mm -hmm. And Lonnie 10 started there. Yeah. And um, so I, I saw it coming up and I thought, oh, bugger it. I'll enter it and see what happens. Mm -hmm. And prior well, standing on the start line of that event, I hadn't actually ran any further than 5Ks. Excellent. <laughs> and I actually didn't know what was going to happen. I thought, well, you know, five, I've done five, you know, maybe I could do 10. Mm -hmm. um, and I had two, well, I had three goals that day. I wanted to run the whole thing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to finish in under one hour and the last goal was basically just not die. Yeah, it's always good. So it is always good. And I think uh, I ran the whole thing and I think I ran 50, 56 or something like that. Wow, that's awesome. And I didn't die. <laughs> um, but what I did do, I, w I limped for the next two or three weeks. Mm -hmm. I had a really sore hip from it. Um, and I, I actually wasn't looking forward to running again after that. Oh, dear. Um, but obviously I did somewhere along the line. Something um, but yeah, made you go I, back to it? <laughs> yeah, it did. But I, I remember finishing um, and I, I remember turning off uh, Godrick Street into Lindsay Street. So you've got like that last, uh, what would it have been, 100 metres? Mm -hmm. um, and my two boys were on the corner. Mm -hmm. And so they... I was running down the road. They ran down the grass beside me. So that was cool. They were only very little. Um, and then I crossed the finish line. And then, you know, how you, you cross the line and then you sort of slow down and you start to walk. Yeah. And then I started to limp. I thought, oh, that, that's a bit sore. And, yeah, that, that hung around for a couple of weeks. <laughs> mm. So you haven't had, um, well, have you had trouble like that since? Uh, obviously went on and have done plenty yeah, of Yeah, no. No, not. Um, not something that I think has popped up again. Okay. Yeah. And then, yeah, obviously I, I must have enjoyed it to some degree because, like you said, I was popping up at races left, right and centre there for a long time. You were, what would be your favourite kind of race? Oh. A 
the trail run, road run. I, I guess I guess my favourite type of race is the race where I do well or do better than I expected to do. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as, yeah, I, trail, yeah, trail, I think. Yeah. But I, I like a good road race where you can sort of, where you can go as hard as you can go for as long as you can go mm -hmm. at a consistent sort of pace. Yeah, where the environment's which, not going to interrupt your... Yeah, so like a, like the Lonnie Tent, a flat road race, you know, you can just go belt out as quick as you can for as long as you can, mm. whereas a trail race is obviously you you vary a lot with your pace and your cadence and stuff like yeah. that because of the environment. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I do love a good trail race. Um, where do you like to train? Obviously, you because of your 2K or because of your daily running, you've got quite a bit of – you're running a lot in a suburb, I assume. Yeah. Plus I see your Strava. <laughs> <laughs> where, where do you like to train, though? Like if – because of, that's the different thing that um, – But if you – yeah, I, I guess it depends on, depends on the weather and depends how I'm feeling. I, I guess I'd prefer to train on a trail, mm -hmm. just because of the environment. Yeah, I'd like to go places that have a nice view or a nice outlook or a nice, you know, nice environment. Yeah, the suburb and and the road training, I guess, is just. Um, because you have to, yeah, you know. Because it's there. Yeah, because it's there. Because you're there, and it's what it is at the time. Um, but yeah, you know, I do like just even sneaking off up into Trevallon, you know, and just tootling around up there for a couple of hours. It's beautiful up there. Yeah, it is. Um, what's your further furthest? <laughs> furthest. <What's your> furthest <laughs> run. <laughs> um, sixty-four Bruni solo. That's a, that's a challenging one. Um, and what do you have coming up that you're excited about when it comes to a race? Um, I don't think I've got anything really. I haven't entered anything. I haven't planned for anything. I tend not to enter too far out. Yeah. I don't train for something specifically. Um, okay. I kind of... I see the event coming and if I'm free for that weekend or I can make it work and and if I think, yeah, I'd like to do it, then I'll enter and go and do it. Um, but I don't look at something, say, 12 weeks out and then start on some sort of a program. So you're training at the moment just so that people understand because I obviously I forget when you know people you, well, reasonably, you think um, you forget that there are things other people don't know. You're not just running 2Ks a day, seven days a week, are you, Jace? No. And so just to just to clear up either, I'm not training. I've, I've never followed a training plan. Yeah. yeah. So I just run. Yeah. Generally, my week looks something like on a Monday and Tuesday is a 2K run, mm -hmm. just gentle. Yeah. Um, and either morning or evening, depending on a lot of, yeah, a whole bunch yeah. of things, weather, my daughter, whether or not I've got to cook. Yeah. Wednesdays almost exclusively is at the running company running with the run club. Thursday night or Thursday is anything from two to 10 Ks. Mm -hmm. Could be solo, could yeah. be with a mate. Late so run club, then. sorry for those who don't know, run club's about 7K depending on yep. what's going yep. on. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, about 7K. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Thursday night, these days, well, most recently has been with a mate. We just catch up after work and we mm -hmm. go for a bit of a general toodle. Um, yeah. Nothing too stressful or strenuous. Fridays, um, for me, certainly during COVID, Friday traditionally was a very early, like maybe a 5.30 start, mm -hmm. 10K. Usually the same loop or the same out and back. Mm -hmm. um, and because I was doing it at about the same time every Friday morning, Mm -hmm. I would see the same people or the same cars or the same whatever. And yeah. so I started to call that a Groundhog Day run, <laughs> which um, I don't know, I found amusing. <laughs> <laughs> um, Saturdays, yeah, it could be anything, park run or something, um, you know, if I've got my daughter, I might run, she might ride. 
it could be five k's, it could be two k's. Yes. Um, and then Sunday, I always try and squeeze a long run in. Yep. Whether that be early in the morning or later in the afternoon, just mm -hmm. depending. Mm -hmm. um, but what I have tried to do, um, pr yes, for the last four or five years, I reckon, mm -hmm. is average 50 a week, 50 k's a week. So that keeps you able to, as you said, be able to jump into a race, uh, you know, a week out or whatever yeah. you could register yep. for a race, you know, yep. as long as it's under, I suppose, 21 or whatever the number is. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, I can feel confident that you can yep. just complete yep. it. That, mm. that gives me enough fitness. Mm. I could enter a half marathon today and race it this weekend. Yeah. And, okay, I'm probably never going to achieve a time that I'm possibly capable of if I set down or well, if if i set to a program mm. maybe a 10-week program and really focused on it mm -hmm. i could probably run a half quicker than not training for it but just maintaining my my running streak my 50 k's a week and then entering an event what do you think your motivation is for running why, why? um i don't know i i guess a lot of the motivation is just to keep running every day. Mm -hmm. um, because? You know, um, because it's a challenge. Yeah. It's not just a physical challenge, I guess, but it's the challenge of, of finding the time in the day, working the week around so that I can do that every single day. Mm. Yeah. Um, some days it's a physical challenge. Yeah. Hmm. How do you, do you, have you ever had those moments or do you have them regularly where your running just feels fluid, like you're in the flow of, of everything around you is great, you know, the environment, your body is moving really smoothly and everything just feels, it's like the runner's high, I suppose. I don't always like to use that term, but do you, do you get that very often or have you had it? What um, that kind of Probably not. Yeah, not not often. Mm. Some days, some days just feels yeah, it feels good. Just most working. yeah, most days it's you know it feels like it's probably hard work. Mm -hmm. Whether or not that's because I'm overdoing it a little bit, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, some some days you'll enter a race and it'll just feel good. Yeah, yeah, certainly not often enough though. <laughs> We want those times more often. Yes, we do. <laughs> what do you think about when you're running, Jace? What sort of things do you think about? Don't have to be the details, but <laughs> no, I, I actually I, I think it's funny. I think about so much stuff when I run. Yeah. And you know, you process stuff and some stuff's important stuff and some stuff's just menial nothingness. Mm -hmm. But usually then I get back from a run. And I can't actually recall what it was that I thought about to any great degree. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily, I don't know. you didn't it's weird. solve all the problems of the world because then yeah. you wouldn't be able to put them in place because you couldn't remember exactly. what it was you thought about. <laughs> exactly. You know, I run along and I make little lists in my head about stuff that I need to do or stuff yep. that's coming up or, you know, oh, I need to write that down. But then when I get back and by the time you're sort of, sit down, have a rest, and yeah, I don't know, it's gone. Oh. So it's kind of kind of pointless. <laughs> when do you think you called yourself a runner? Like earlier you said that you you don't think you even thought of yourself as a runner by the time you signed up to or went to your first run club. Mm. Um, so when do you think you did, or do you, do you call yourself a runner? Um, yeah, I, I guess I do now. Couldn't say when that changed though. Maybe, maybe when it was starting to meet more people that were just like me. They were just people that ran for whatever reason that they ran for. Yeah. Um, and then you would then organise to you know catch up with them on a different day to go for a run or you know. And then we started the the sock group. Mm -hmm. Maybe somewhere in there you kind of. Um, consider yourself to be a runner or mm -hmm. yeah specifically for me I don't know mm. maybe it's after you start entering events yeah. um, 
you know, because they're running events for runners. But essentially, all runners are just people that run. Yeah. You know, we're, we're all different people, all yeah. different walks of life and backgrounds that just have, I don't know, a common um, hobby or, or interest or yeah. pastime or whatever. Um, mm. If you, like you did mention earlier too, that if, you know, you hurt your leg and you couldn't run for a little while or something, um, if, if you couldn't run for some reason, how does that, may, how do you think it'll make you feel? Like, do you think that'll be stuff that you will need to process or because oh, especially yeah. if when our identity is so tied around being yeah. a runner yeah. and then we suddenly can't for some reason? Yeah, I, um, I would accept the fact that I couldn't run and couldn't do keep up with the run streak, mm-hmm. um, but it wouldn't be that easy to accept. Yeah, that would be difficult, I reckon, yeah. after all this time. Yeah. Um, I don't know whether I would then start up another running streak. Mm-hmm. I hadn't actually thought about that until just now. Mm, it's interesting, isn't it? Mm. Um, you, do you think you you keep running though, but you just wouldn't necessarily do it as a streak? Do you think? Yeah. Like if it was oh, an yeah. injury that you recovered, you know that you. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yep. Mm. You know, there's too much enjoyment and um, um, and benefits and friendships that have come from it mm. to to just stop. So, how long do you think you'll run for? Which is a question I ask most people. As long as I can. <gasps> Forever. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, mean. I, I would, um, yeah, I'd love to be, I don't know, 70 and still be able to even just put a pair of shoes on and shuffle off around the block. At 53, 70 doesn't feel very far away for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm not even putting a number. <laughs> like, no, I, have, probably, I have no number. <laughs> probably the best idea. Just run those, until you can't. Those really old, not really old people. I should say like people in their nineties or whatever who are still shuffling around, and then they one day they just die of natural causes, and it's like that's me. I <laughs> just yeah, that's right. Yep. Just, you know, lived a good life and yeah. didn't wake up one day. Exactly, that's perfect. Yep. It would be. <laughs> um, if um, if you didn't run. What do you think would be missing in your life? Oh, that's tricky. Hmm. If I didn't run, what would be missing? I don't know. There, there'd be, I guess, running is that one constant, mm-hmm. and for me, it's that one everyday constant. Mm-hmm. And so, if I didn't have that, yeah, I, I don't know. You, that's a difficult one to answer. Your back, like physically, your back would be sore. <laughs> I would think so. Yeah, <laughs> you'd have yeah. to learn to I, swim. Yes, I would. I would have to learn to swim or take up some other form of exercise um, yeah. to sort of assist in that. Um, which I can't think of anything else that I'd actually want to be doing. Um, but yeah, certainly losing that that one constant every single day, mm. where you know that you've got to make that happen. Mm. Yeah, you know, everything else in your day, work or whatever. Yeah, you know. Comes and goes. Yeah. You know, you don't work every day because you don't work the weekends usually where you have holidays or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, you don't need to cook dinner every day because some days you're just not hungry. Yeah. But I have to find time to run every yeah. single day. And so if I didn't have that, I don't think I'd have any other constants it's interesting. In, in my day or my week or whatever. So do you, you think um, in your mind it it helps you stay stable or what? I don't know what the word is. It's probably not the right word, but it just gives you that um, thing to tie everything else to, if you like. So it just yeah, quite possibly. It it, it just gives yeah, it gives you a focus. I mean, I've never been one for um, needing to do something like running to keep mm-hmm. me. Um, mentally fit I guess yeah. I, I've, I've never been one to need that sort of a thing yeah. um, but it is it's nice to have something to focus on in amongst the busyness of life um, do you, you know. think running makes you happy oh without a doubt yeah what what about it makes you happy uh, just 
being able to get out and do something and get, um, you know, you're getting benefit from it. Mm. You know, I could get out and walk around the block, Mm -hmm. but let's face it, you walk around the block, you're not really getting a lot of physical benefit from it. Mm -hmm. But I know that I'm running, you know, in theory, improving uh, my physical health and maybe extending my my lifespan. Mm-hmm. Um, it's giving me the opportunity to stay fit, so therefore I can do other things. Um, I found that once, so one of my other passions or pastimes has been uh, rally cars yeah. and specifically a navigator. Mm-hmm. You spend a lot of time in the car and it's a very hot environment and mm-hmm. it's a very mentally taxing environment at times Mm -hmm. i found that once i took up running and had been running for a while and had improved my physical fitness i would get out of the car at the end of the day and would feel better for it oh wow that's so yeah so running allowed me to perform better or yeah Mm. um so certainly lots of benefits from it and some that you probably would never think about or consider. No, I love that. That's a really good point because that's what a lot of the science shows is when we run, it's a little bit like meditating. Actually, the same things happen in our brain, the same chemicals are released and the same new neural pathways are created. So Mm -hmm. new neural pathways being created uh, is a reflection of you being able to be a better navigator or be able to do that without, you know, getting as exhausted at the end of that day. Yeah. That's a symptom of that, a positive <laughs> symptom. Yes. So that's really cool. I love to hear that. How often are you doing the um, the rally car driving now? Uh, not so much at the moment. So I started that with a mate back in uh, 99, I think we started. Mm-hmm. And we've just done it periodically on and off over, mm-hmm. you know, uh, between uh, when was the last time we ran? Maybe five or six years ago. Okay. Um, uh, you know, as a pair. Mm-hmm. Uh, in our car and then i've also navigated for I don't know, a whole bunch of people yeah. um, around the place sort of on and off uh, yeah. but yeah i don't think i've been in a car for nearly two years i reckon oh okay hmm. to say because it, obviously it's possible to have more than one hobby at one time <laughs> that yes. can be um you know quite an, an all-encompassing hobby because i know for a few years i used to see you post quite a bit about um your cars car racing and things too mm. so obviously that's a very time consuming hobby yes um, or can be especially can be, when, yes. when it's in the season or a race or i don't know what terms you use for that um yeah but you were all i guess my point is you were also able to continue your running as well so it's not like it's one or the other unless you want it to be no and i guess you know i guess i was probably and, and you have to be you've got to be selfish sometimes yeah you know, if if you want to do the things that you love, you need to find the time and make the time mm-hmm. rather than just say, oh, it's all too hard. I don't yeah. have the time. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm probably very selfish when it comes to my running. Um, yeah. But, yeah, sometimes you have to be. So you've got three kids, is that right? That's right, yeah. Yep. So um, what do you think the example is that you're providing them by being a, you know, a regular runner? In fact, you're probably the most regular runner that I've talked to in 68 episodes. <laughs> um, I would like to think that um, they, they see it and they are absorbing mm-hmm. what I do. Um, currently, uh, none of my kids run. Yep. Um, they all have some point as they were growing up Mm -hmm. um, but currently they don't Um, my eldest is probably the most active he plays touch football and um, and referees touch football um, and so plays netball but um, yeah they sort of they certainly haven't followed in my footsteps you know no but hopefully they are absorbing yeah even subconsciously what I do and yep. the fact that at some point during a day I slip out for some exercise mm-hmm. and you know maybe that'll sort of surface within them mm-hmm. later on down their track I think like for me having had five children um, I and none of them are necessary no none of them are particularly running at the moment and like yours might have all done some running but 
I think it's not just with, that they're not doing it now. It's the fact that it's in their toolbox because even yes. if they didn't necessarily run as children, they've always seen us run as yes. their parents. Yep. And to them, they're half me and half their dad or whatever, but I, whatever I do is in their toolbox, it's in their genetics. And so yes. in the future, when they choose, you know, they have a back problem like you did or whatever, they can put their hand in their toolbox and go, oh, I'll try running. Maybe that'll help this, whatever's going on yeah. in their life. So yeah. to me, um, any parent who runs, I think, is giving that gift to their kids, whether their kids appear to be taking it and running with it at that time or not. I yeah, think. no, I agree. It okay. certainly, it can never be a bad thing. Mm. If, um, if your kids have seen you as they were growing, growing up, they've mm. seen their parent as being able to find the time to be active, to get the enjoyment out of being active um, and most likely probably not suffer too many ailments along the way because they are fit and healthy and active. Um, I'm sure that as they grow and mature, you know, subconsciously mm. even, yeah, like you said, that, that's in their toolbox. Yeah, I love that. Is there anything, and we'll, we'll touch on um, narrow on to poo in a minute, but is there anything nice. that we haven't talked about apart from narrow on to poo? Um, in regards to running that you would like to share? Oh, I've no idea. I don't think so. Yeah, I think we've touched a few things that we needed to. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. All right. So I will ask you in a minute for some running tips, but before I do, um, I would love you to share with people uh, uh, an event that I helped run at one point and you prior did. to that I was uh, involved by running it, <laughs> running in it since its inception in fact I ran in the first one and oh did you the four yeah, beaches it was five, <laughs> four beaches yeah many yeah. many years ago so I've had a bit to do with this particular race and now uh, you and a couple of other people have taken it on um, which is awesome because it's in the most beautiful part of, of Tasmania so it is. Give us, maybe you could do a little, um, a little quick ad for the oh, Run Narrowantapu. It doesn't have to be uh, mad. Just tell us about a race that you're uh, directing. Is that what the, the term is at the moment? Yes. You're yep. directing? So, yep. I'm race director for Run Narrowantapu. Um, it was an event that existed in a few different forms, as you well know, over yeah. the last, yeah, however long. I'm not even sure how That's long. a long time ago. Yep. Um, like you, I competed in it uh, a few times. Mm -hmm. um, so we have, um, we, we, in our event, we have three distances. We have 12, 25, and 50. Mm -hmm. um, when I competed, I always did the 25. I think you probably did the long run a few times. Done, yep. Done every distance. <laughs> and then uh, along the way, you were, you were race director as well. I have done race um, directing for a yeah of for one for one of the times that I ran you were race director, mm -hmm. um, and then basically diplomatically I guess um, myself and a couple of others decided to take on the event and bring it back to being a locally um, owned I guess owns probably yeah. not the right word but but locally acquired and locally run event. Yeah. By just a small handful of very uh, passionate uh, local runners mm -hmm. that wanted to see the event survive mm -hmm. and evolve. Um, because, like you said, it's a beautiful part of the world Gorgeous. and it, it's your backyard. Mm -hmm. uh, it's my backyard. I've grown up in that area um, my, through having um, our holiday shack down that way. Yeah. And it's, it's probably, yeah, one of my, definitely one of my favourite places to run. Mm. And so when, when the little group of us started to chat about it, we quickly decided, yep, it was a very good idea that we needed to, to grab it and turn it into something um, local and something special. So last year we ran the first uh, running of Run the mm -hmm. um, which was uh, a great success. Um, and, yeah, we, we're just in the midst of organising um, the run for this year, which is May, tw uh, sorry, yeah, May 22nd. May the 22nd. Yes. And um, if I'll put the link to the Facebook page, because I don't think you've got entries open just yet. No, entries yep. are not open just yet. We, uh, we've just got a, 
yeah, you've got to save the date out there, that's all. Yeah, so I'll put that on the, the Facebook page. So um, I would encourage anyone who's in Tasmania, or I know certainly in the years that I was involved with it, even um, just running it, um, a lot of people came from the mainland and even a few from overseas. Yes. And by then, yep. and the borders are sort of open now, sort of. Yes. So if you're listening to this and you don't happen to be in Tassie, um, you should look at coming down to run it because it is spectacular. You run along ocean uh, cliffs and um, and onto beaches and then you turn around and come back again. Yep. <laughs> it's quite co beautiful. Co sheltered coastal trails, open yep. beaches. Yeah, it, it's got a bit of everything. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's it's just beautiful down there. It is. Um, so I'll put that up there for people. And when are you expecting registrations to open, do you think? Uh, probably another three or four weeks, I reckon. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, just waiting on some paperwork and whatnot. Fantastic. All right, that's oh. very exciting. Um, all right. So thank you for sharing that, Chase. That's awesome. The other thing I wanted to ask you, which I ask everybody, is do you have some tips for beginner runners? So if someone came to you and said, Chase, wow, you've run how many days in a row? <laughs> you must have some running tips. Um, just people to get them started and I guess to keep them running. You know, running um, that flash of pan. Keep it simple mm -hmm. and keep it gentle. Mm -hmm. I guess don't overdo it. Mm -hmm. um, buy good shoes. Yeah. Good shoes are everything and, and life's too short for shitty shoes. <laughs> um, so, you know, without a doubt, if, if you're going to take up running, take yourself into a specialist running store like yeah. the running company mm -hmm. and be fitted um, with the correct shoe for you. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, just just make sure you enjoy it. You know, there's no point doing it if you're not enjoying it every time you go out. Um, yeah. 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 I reckon that that should cover it. That's awesome. I love it. Thank you. Thank you, Jace Milner. It has been a delight to have a chat with you and get to know you a little more. Um, don't Likewise. go because Thanks. I'll, um, I'll uh, have okay. a quick chat to you off the recording. But thank you. Um, and I will see you out there on the trails, if not at yes. Run Narrawantapu. <laughs> yes, I'll um, I'll give you a ring because um, you know we need helpers if uh, <laughs> if you're not going to run. <laughs> and that's for everyone too, by the way, not just me. <laughs> well, yeah, if anyone's keen on uh, volunteering, get in touch. Excellent. All right, thanks, Jace. You're rock star. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Fit Mind Fit Body podcast. I'd love to talk to you about your running journey. So send me a message on Facebook or on the website and let's do it. For a bunch of resources on mindful running that will help you get and stay mentally and physically fit, head over to the website fitmindfitbody.co and I'll see you there. Plus, I'll be back here in your podcast player a few times a week. Hit subscribe now so that you don't miss an episode. And before you go, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a review. It'll help more people to find the podcast and get inspired to start running. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye.